When Hurricane Helene swept through the East Coast several weeks ago, it left 227 people dead and nearly 2 million without power, becoming one of the most powerful storms in recent memory. Now, Florida's Gulf Coast has been battered by the merciless Hurricane Milton, the most destructive hurricane to strike the area since October 1921. These back-to-back -back hurricanes aren't random acts of nature. They are part of a disturbing trend driven by climate change, which is pushing storms to new extremes. The question is, how is climate change contributing to the rise of intense hurricanes? And what can we expect in the years to come? Join us as we reveal the science behind these recent deadly hurricanes accompanied by heavy downpours and fierce winds. Over the last 10,000 years, Earth has enjoyed a remarkably stable climate in terms of temperature, carbon dioxide levels, and sea levels. This consistency supported human growth from 20 million to 8 billion people and allowed civilization to develop as we know it. However, that stability is now in jeopardy, and the effects of climate change are far from linear. Our planet has critical thresholds, and crossing them could trigger rapid, irreversible shifts. Hurricane Helene is a clear example of these alarming changes. The storm became one of the deadliest to hit the U.S. in 50 years, ravaging six states, killing over 200 people, and leaving 600 missing. Over 2 million people remain without power, and damages are estimated at $47.5 billion. The situation goes from bad to worse with the arrival of Hurricane Milton, an even more destructive hurricane. This deadly storm has wreaked havoc across Florida, spinning up tornadoes and unleashing heavy rains and fierce winds that have flattened homes and left millions without power. Stick around as we dig into how climate change is influencing these recent deadly hurricanes, explore the science behind these destructive storms, and look at what experts are predicting for future storms. To kick things off, let's set the stage with some important context. On August 24, 1992, Hurricane Andrew hit just 25 miles south of Miami, bringing along a monstrous 16-foot storm surge and winds blasting at 165 miles per hour. The aftermath? A staggering $25 billion in damages and over 40 lives lost. Andrew was a Category 5 storm, the highest rating of hurricane intensity. Andrew wiped out 25,524 homes and caused damage to 101,241 more, making it the costliest natural disaster in U.S. history until Hurricane Katrina devastated Louisiana in 2005. If a storm like that slammed into Miami today, the damage could easily top $100 billion. With way more people and buildings packed along the coast now, not just in Miami but in other crowded coastal spots around the globe, the potential for destruction is just as serious. Now, let's see what these deadly storms really are. Tropical cyclones go by different names depending on the ocean, but Atlantic hurricanes like Katrina and Sandy are probably the most well-known. These storms are among the most destructive monsters that nature presents to us. A fully developed hurricane can span over 100 miles and travel vast distances, with the eye featuring towering walls of clouds and ice that reach high into the lower layers of our atmosphere. Before we dive into Hurricane Helene, its aftermath, and its connection to climate change, let's understand how these destructive hurricanes are formed. What causes a storm to grow that massive? Keep in mind that heat and wind are the basic ingredients for a hurricane. Let's start with the wind. When there's low pressure, air rushes in to fill that space, cranking up those intense hurricane winds. But that doesn't explain why they spin. Winds usually want to go straight, but they get pushed off course by the Coriolis effect. If Earth didn't rotate, hurricanes wouldn't spin either. A 100 mile per hour wind blowing north near the equator is also moving east because it's following Earth's rotation. 
Since the Earth is a sphere, its rotation slows as we move closer to the poles. So, as that wind travels north, the atmosphere and Earth beneath it aren't rotating as quickly, and the wind's sideways motion outpaces Earth's spin, pushing it eastward. On the opposite side, winds are moving slower and get dragged westward. This is why hurricanes spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. This is also why hurricanes can't form too close to the equator. There isn't enough rotational difference at lower latitudes to set the storm spinning. As you move toward the eye of the storm, wind speeds increase due to angular momentum, just like a figure skater spinning faster when they pull their arms in. Now, the second key ingredient is heat from warm water. A hurricane works a bit like an engine. Not a car engine, but more like the ideal engine proposed by French physicist Nicolas Carnot. In this ideal setup, as the piston rises, pressure drops while heat is added to keep the temperature steady. But what if we stop adding heat and just keep lowering the pressure? The gas cools down. Now let's flip it. When we lower the piston, you'd think the pressure would heat up the gas, but our engine removes heat to keep the temperature stable. As the piston keeps compressing, we stop removing heat, causing both temperature and pressure to rise. While ideal engines like this don't really exist, hurricanes work in a similar way. As winds race towards the center, the low pressure should cool them, but the air stays warm thanks to tons of evaporating water. And we're talking huge amounts. A typical hurricane can carry over a hundred billion pounds of water. So how does evaporation keep wind temperature stable? The transformation of water from liquid to vapor demands energy, which results in the separation and dispersion of molecules. This is why you experience a chill when exiting a pool, or the cooling of soup that's been left out for too long. As water evaporates, it takes heat along with it. This heat gets absorbed into the wind, maintaining a consistent temperature despite the decreasing pressure, similar to the initial stage of our ideal engine. As air rises, the original heat source disappears, causing water vapor to condense back into liquid form, thereby releasing the stored heat into the atmosphere. The temperature at the top of a hurricane is actually higher, attributable solely to the heat produced by condensing water vapor. This heated air then ascends, emitting radiation into space, and descends back towards the Earth, warming up as it compresses, thereby readying the hurricane engine for another cycle. Such a feedback loop sustains hurricanes as self-reliant engines of devastation, consuming an amount of power equivalent to the entire United States. As long as there is enough warm water, the hurricane keeps feeding itself, growing larger and more intense. The size and rainfall of a hurricane are the biggest indicators of how bad it will be, but intensity is measured by wind speed. Category 1 hurricanes are the weakest, while anything over 157 miles per hour is a Category 5. According to calculations using equations from Carnot's ideal engine and Earth's climate data, the theoretical maximum wind speed should be 190 miles per hour. Now that we know the science behind hurricanes, let's examine some recent deadly storms, their impact, and the role climate change plays. What led to the deadly hurricane Helene and Milton? On September 24, 2024, Hurricane Helene formed in the warm Caribbean waters and quickly ramped up from a tropical storm to a fierce hurricane. By September 27, it made landfall in Florida unleashing devastating winds and record-breaking rainfall that wrecked communities all over the southeastern United States. The storm's effects were felt way beyond the coast as it moved inland, causing serious flooding and damage in places like Georgia, South Carolina, and Virginia. As Helene approached the Gulf Coast, meteorologists were keeping a close eye on it. The hurricane intensified fast, hitting maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour or 225 kilometers per hour, right before making landfall. The storm surge reached as high as 15 feet, flooding coastal areas and forcing widespread evacuations. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, warned about the potential for catastrophic and life-threatening flooding, urging people to take the storm seriously 
and evacuate if needed. Once Helene hit land, it didn't just cause chaos along the coast. Its remnants pushed inland, dumping torrential rains across a huge area, including Georgia, the Carolinas, and parts of Virginia. The heavy rainfall combined with existing weather systems led to flash floods that overwhelmed rivers and drainage systems, leaving many communities in dire straits. Tragically, at least 227 lives were lost, making Helene one of the deadliest hurricanes to strike the mainland U.S. since Hurricane Katrina in 2005. The aftermath of Hurricane Helene was a total disaster. Whole towns were underwater, homes were wrecked, and millions were left in the dark. The flooding hit especially hard in the southern Appalachians, where the steep hills funneled rainwater into rivers and streams leading to flash floods that reached all the way up to rooftops in some spots. A lot of folks found themselves stuck, unable to escape because the flooding happened so fast. On top of the immediate wreckage, the storm really exposed some major weaknesses in our infrastructure. Many areas hit by Helene had old drainage systems and levees that just couldn't handle such extreme weather. Experts pointed out that this outdated infrastructure wasn't built to cope with the growing intensity of storms fueled by climate change. Hey guys, just a moment before we continue. Be sure to join the Insane Curiosity channel. Click on the bell. You'll help us to make products of even higher quality. But what's the connection between this deadly storm and climate change? Studies conducted by scientists from various institutions indicated that human-induced climate change significantly influenced the storm's rainfall and wind speeds. Specifically, climate change was found to have increased Helene's rainfall by about 10% and intensified its winds by approximately 11%. The warm sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, which were about 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 2 degrees Celsius above average, made conditions ripe for such a powerful storm. The U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, has also connected the serious impacts of Hurricane Helene to climate change. FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell explained that this storm took a while to develop, but once it did, it intensified very rapidly. And that's because of the warm waters in the Gulf that's creating more storms that are reaching this major category level. She noted that the rising temperatures in the Gulf were creating conditions that resulted in significant infrastructure damage across several states. The FEMA administrator mentioned that a 4.5-meter storm surge hit where Helene came ashore, and nearly 75 centimeters of rain fell in western North Carolina. According to the latest report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the number of hurricanes hitting those intense categories 4 and 5 is expected to rise as the planet warms. Helene marks the eighth Category 4 or 5 Atlantic hurricane to make landfall in the U.S in just the last eight years, matching the total number of these intense storms that struck the U.S. in the previous 57 years. Here's the central point. Data from NOAA's Coral Reef Watch shows that the sea surface temperatures along Helene's path through the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico were about 1 to 2 degrees Celsius higher than average, which enhanced the impact of the destructive storm. Research also indicated that the likelihood of hurricanes like Helene occurring has increased due to climate change. As if things weren't bad enough, Hurricane Milton rolled in and made things even worse. Hurricane Milton struck during the early hours of Thursday, October 10, 2024, marking the third hurricane to hit Florida this year. It made landfall near Siesta Key as a fierce Category 3 storm but weakened to a Category 1 as it pushed through the state and headed back out to sea according to the National Hurricane Center. This also makes it the fifth hurricane to hit the U.S. in 2024. When Milton arrived, it knocked out power for over 3 million people across Florida. Wind gusts reached up to 100 miles per hour near Tampa, prompting a flash flood emergency and halting emergency services. St. Petersburg got slammed with about 16 inches of rain which is a more than 1 in 1,000 year event for the area. And what can we expect in the years to come? Scientists are warning that climate change is likely to make rapidly intensifying hurricanes like Helene a more regular thing. 
These storms are super dangerous because they can not catch forecasters off guard and leave local populations with limited time to prepare or evacuate. Take a lean for example, it went from a Category 1 to a Category 4 in under 24 hours. In fact, it's one of only 10 storms since 1950 to have strengthened by about 65 km per hour in the 24 hours leading up to landfall. And get this, 5 of those 10 storms have hit in just the last 7 years alone. That's all for this video. What's your take on the recent hurricanes? What would you like us to cover next? Feel free to leave your answers in the comments below. If you liked the video, then you should check out the one on your screen. This video on how La Niña's may affect Earth in 2025 will blow your mind. Thanks for watching.